The second kind of church and pathway and leadership gifting is that of the pastor teacher. Now there's an interesting thing in the Greek language when it comes to pastors and teachers. And that is that according to the most recent analysis of the Greek of this passage, what it is saying is, is that every pastor is also a teacher, but not every teacher is also a pastor. That's the construction of this Greek phrase with the use of the word and. And we see this in real life. You can go to a Bible college or a seminary and you can see a person who has a gift of teaching, but they're not a shepherd. They wouldn't do well in that role. But every shepherd, every pastor of a church needs to also teach and is gifted to do that although they might not have a special strong gift of teaching like a teacher and so the person who is the pastor teacher is going to want a broader approach to disciple making probably not going to do just five different teaching times every week they will move a church oftentimes to where there's an emphasis on small groups because they believe that there needs to be not just one shepherd but many shepherds shepherding many groups of sheep all over the church and all over the city and so they will move toward more small groups and maybe Sunday school and maybe missional communities or some kind of a of a different under shepherds guiding God's sheep and not just relying on one teacher to teach all the time. They still will teach in a worship service, but they'll multiply small groups and they'll often also emphasize one-on-one disciple making. They'll emphasize that they will meet with a person and help them grow one-on-one. And then they encourage people in the church, everyone to make disciples, to meet one-on-one, to help another person grow, who can then help another person grow. And pastor teachers often have this passion and this direction. And then we have evangelists. In America, we often call these now seeker driven churches because the front door of the church is Sunday morning. And the front door of the ministry of the church, of the disciple making pathway, is that the Christians are encouraged to bring their non-Christian friends into the worship service on Sunday morning that is specifically designed for them as a non-Christian. And we call these seeker-driven churches. Now, in the old days in America, we had Southern Baptist churches where pastors were gifted evangelists and they would preach the gospel every Sunday and people would be saved and the church would grow and sometimes it was a mile wide and an inch deep all these baby Christians all these new Christians coming in the front door of the church becoming a Christian through the evangelist pastor and if that evangelist pastor didn't broaden his team so that there were also pastor teachers creating small groups so that there were one-on-one disciple-making going on, so that there were also those who were sent ones who wanted to send people around the world in missions. If that didn't develop, then the church was a a mile wide and an inch deep. And then in the north, the innovation was that Bill Hybels started Willow Creek Community Church. He's a gifted leader and a gifted evangelist. And so he took a hundred high school kids and they began to meet in a movie theater. And when I was a student at 
in Chicago. I visited this church early in its history, two years after it had started, and the word was that in one year they had seen a thousand adults come to know Christ who were the parents of these hundred teenagers and college kids who had started the church and their family members. In one year, a thousand people. What a gift of evangelism. And this church has continued to emphasize bringing your friends, bringing your family, hearing about Christ. And Bill Hybels is such a gifted evangelist that now the church, I think, has 20,000 people. But he was also wise to bring in men like John Ortberg and start on Wednesday night a service for believers where they would worship and the Bible would be taught. And they also emphasized small groups and they had pastor teachers that were gifted there and they would have a commitment to small group ministry. And so the front door of the church matched the gifting of the lead pastor, Bill Hybels, as an evangelist, but they built a complementary team of all of these gifts. And it's one of the reasons why this is one of the strongest churches in America and has had impact around the world. But one of the things that can happen again is, is that if a church is designed and loves their pastor to be an evangelist, then all of a sudden they make a big change and bring in a teacher. Sometimes there's a lot of people who say, we like the old wineskin better. Why this change? So churches have to be careful about changing back and forth between these disciple-making pathways and stay with one that matches who the lead pastor is and then build this complementary team. And then there are those who are gifted as prophets. Now, by a prophet, we don't mean a capital P prophet like Agabus, who could foretell the future. We don't mean a capital P prophet as someone who gives us the written word of God, something on the level of Scripture. We mean by a prophet here, someone who shines forth God's truth, that their special gifting is that they're able to make the truth of the Word of God shine into the culture so that people can see what it really means to follow Christ. Now, sometimes these gifted prophets are the great Bible, te- the great preachers of our day. I think of a person like John Piper in America. He has this small p gifting, and they have thousands of people coming, not because he's a gifted evangelist, but because he's a gifted preacher. But then there's another form of this small p prophet and the truth-driven pathway. And Erwin McManus is an example of this. He's the pastor of Mosaic Church in in Los Angeles. This is a smaller church. It's not thousands of people. It's a few hundred people. Because Erwin McManus is not especially interested in a large, big, dynamic church. He's interested more in what he calls being an experimental church. And he talks about going to a conference one day and the speaker was saying, now, if you're a pastor and you're leading a church, you don't want to make too many changes because you can really get into big trouble. And you can be like someone who's going out to gather mushrooms and you pick up a poisonous mushroom and you're poisoned And so it's better not just to make too many changes. Well, Herb McManus followed the speaker and said, I respect you, brother, so much, but now you've given me a new metaphor for who I am. I'm a mushroom eater. I'm changing all the time. I want to find new ways to penetrate the culture. I want to find new ways to shine forth God's church. I want to experiment with church so that it's different and it's unlike anything else in the area. And it could attract those who want to hear the truth in a new and fresh way. I'm a mushroom eater. And you know what happens to prophets. Oftentimes they are killed. John the Baptist lost his head. It's one of the things that goes along with being a prophet. 
But this is one of the ways that some churches are started. They have a pastor who is very much about being creative and reaching into the culture with the truth of God's Word. And they better stay with a person with that gift and not change that gifting if that person leaves. And again, build out a complementary team so there are people being trained in evangelism, so that there are small groups, so that um, these different dimensions of the church are also true. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.